All right, uh, this video is, we're gonna draw the saddle bracket. And we're gonna talk about your, your model history tree, which is this window over on the left-hand side here. Um, and it, I wanna show you how you can utilize it in doing your designs and, and kind of navigating through. So we want a, um, a new English inch part file. And if I come to my tree here and I expand it, it's got all my things here. And just, just to show you, you can turn visibility of these things on by right clicking and go visibility. And you can turn them off. Oh, X didn't take. There we go. So they're yellow, so they're a little difficult to see with my white background, but there it is. All right, so we're going to start a, a 2D sketch on the front view plane. Check my view cube, make sure it's correct. And I'm going to start a line command, and I'm going to constrain it, the start point to the origin. And I'm going to come straight up, 1.75. I'm going to go horizontal to the right, 0.5. And I'm going to come down, straight down, I don't know. Go across, I don't know. I'm going to come back up and match it with the height of what I've already got. And go over 0.5. Come down. I'm not real sure how far down. Come over, not real sure how far over. And notice all these are perpendicular to each other and go down to my X axis and then come back and close my loop. So there's my, uh, my general shape. Okay. And now I know, um, I know some, uh, dimensions because I'm looking at my notes here. Okay. So <clears throat> I'll go ahead and place my overall dimension at 3.25. This height, 0.5, and let's go the height of this line to this line, 0.75, and then here to here, it's going to be 2. Whoa, that's not right. Something in my notes was wrong. Ah, that sounds better. Uh, it should be two from end to end. My bad. All right, so that's that's the size of my sketch that I want, okay? Uh, if you need to pause it and, and do your thing, then go right ahead. Uh, next, we're going to extrude this symmetrically. And I want to go symmetrically, so I'm, I'm going to, to the rear and the front of my sketch plane. And I want it to be 2.5 in width. Okay, and so there's my part. Now, my next sketch, I want to put on the bottom surface. So you could roll it. You could roll it over if you want to. Uh, but there is a better way. You can, a lot of times, you can just get close to an edge and it will pick it up. If it won't, you can right click and go select other, and then that will pull down. You can see all of your variable options. Anyway, so I'm gonna do a sketch on the bottom. And just to make it easier to me, I'm gonna rotate it over. Okay, so I wanna do a circle, and I wanna constrain the circle onto that midpoint of that line. And the radius of my circle is going to go to that outside edge. Now I haven't, I didn't put a dimension on it because I want it to be, I, I, I want it to be tied to the size of the object. And the idea that I'm working towards here with you is that when you do your designs, you kind of want to think ahead as to 
okay, if I have to come back and edit this, how, what's the easiest way for me to, to do this with the least amount of dimensional constraints so that things are tied to each other instead of tied to a dimension? Okay, so that's why I, I, I did constraints on this instead of dimensions for it. Now I want to extrude it. Choose that, but see, it's got the wrong dimension or direction, so I want it to come up. But instead of that height, I want to go to and choose that surface. That looks good. Because what I did now is I've, I've made the thickness of this feature identical to the thickness of this feature. It just makes it easier to change these things. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So now over here in our our browser tree in our model history, we can rename these extrusions. So if I if I long click on it, it'll highlight it, and then I can rename it. And this one I will call base. And this one I will call round. And it may seem kind of simple in this part to do that. <clears throat> but when you start getting things that are very complex, it makes it easier to go back and, and edit if you name things based on what they are. Okay. Now, um, we've built this thing and then we are... Our immediate supervisor sees it and says, eh, let's make some changes. So we want to change our, our length and our width of our initial sketch. So I come back over here and I right click on base and go show dimensions. And then that shows me my, my dimensions that I used in creating it. And so I'm going to change my length to 3.0. And I want to change the extrusion depth to 2.0. Okay, so I've, I've changed those dimensions, but you see nothing changed. So I come up here to the top, and I go local update. And then it changes the sizes. And you notice it grayed out when nothing has to be changed, okay? Okay, so now we want to add a... A concentric hole on this surface here and yeah I know I should have done it earlier but I went back and looked at the directions on how to use this new hole tool and I think I got it figured out it's one of those old dog new trick kind of things because they made a change last year to the software so okay so I'm gonna go hole and the diameter of my hole uh, is 0.75 inch I don't know why this is popping up millimeter 0.75. Let's tab that and see. Okay, so I'm going to select my position and I'm going to choose this top surface. And then because I want it to be concentric, I come over and click the edge and notice the concentric constraint icon popped up there. And so that worked fantastic. Okay, so I've got my hole there. Now, uh, next is going to be a, a cut through these faces here. So I'm going to go sketch. Uh, da, do, how did I do that? Yeah, I'm going to come off of this face. And for my sketch point, I'm going to use a two point rectangle. And because my sketch is on that plane, it's projecting the geometry already. So I'm going to start the rectangle on the top edge. And I want my rectangle to be uh, one inch long. And <clears throat> 0.75 inches high. Okay. And now I want a dimension of there of 0.5. And so now I've got a fully constrained sketch. So I'll finish that. Now I want to extrude that. And so I'm going to pick that square, but I want to cut. And let's say 
I want to go to. And you can see it, it will only cut through one side if that's what I wanted. Or I could do a distance, you know, if I wanted to. Or I could do two next. And it would, if, if, if I wanted to go two and I needed a different face, I could choose that one and, and it would do that. If I go to next, it goes to the next piece of the feature. But in our case, I want to go through all. Okay, and so there's my um, there's my part. Okay, so now that we've uh, let's save it, and you're gonna of course put your last name in it. Saddle bracket. Okay, so we send it off to uh, to our boss to look at it. He sends it over to the engineering people. They look at it and they come back and they say, "Oh, we got to make some changes. We need a fillet right here to to make this part stronger." So there's two ways to do it. You could do it here, and our size we want it to be a radius of 0.25. Okay, so we can do it there, or we can do it in the sketch. So let's, since we're dealing with our history tree, let's go back to here and edit sketch. And let's put a fillet, 0.25, in here. Both ways work the same. Okay, this is a simple fillet, so either way would work. As we start getting more complex things with fillets, then you'll see the order in which you do them will will impact that. And so I'm going to save that. Okay, now uh, let's talk about physical properties, because now we're starting to get into parts that we're specifying the materials that we're going to use. And there's two ways to go about this. So one way is to go file to I properties. And here's where uh, the, the file properties are for this particular part. Summary, you could put in the name of the object, your company name, your name, things like that, project status, stock numbers, description, all these kinds of things. It, and if, if you're working for a company doing these things, manufacturing these, you would fill in this information, okay? Because now you've got data tied to your, your part. We want to look at the physical tab. <clears throat> right now, we have no material applied. It's just generic. So let's change this to iron cast. And it gives me the density of cast iron, the mass of this part, the surface area, and the volume. Okay, and it gives me other things, center of gravity, inertia. If you're engineering parts, this stuff becomes important to you. Okay. If I were to change this to, say, lead, well, before I change it, our mass is 1.5. If I change it to lead, the density of lead is greater than iron, so you see the mass has changed. So let's go back to uh, come on, cast iron, apply that, and close it. And you notice it changed the color, okay? Now, up here in the menu bar up here, you can do those changes up here also. So let's change it to nickel, nickel copper. Now, just to show you, I'll go back to I properties. And you can see it's changed here. Okay. So I want to take it back. Iron cast. And then the color, this is the material property. This is the color of the material. And some of these, cast iron really has a bubbly surface. So I, I'm not really sure why, but the default color on the product cast iron is that iron gray. And I don't know why it's defaulting like that. But in reality, it has a rough surface. Now, this is just a graphic. The surface is not really rough. It's just like a JPEG image applied to it. 
But that's how you would assign material properties and change colors of the parts, okay? And we, we get more into those kind of things later in some of the more advanced features and projects. But there it is. Uh, save your stuff, rename it, and submit it into uh, in Blackboard. If you've got questions, as always, send us an email, hit us up on WebEx, or come to the lab.